How did the idea to write this book originate, and why now? Can you tell us? Maybe I, maybe I can start. Um, so, well, for a long time there's been a realization that uh, when it comes to the understanding urbanization, and particularly rapid urbanization, and, and how it plays out in many different parts of the world, there's been um, uh, a lot of information and knowledge generated on that there. In, in that subject, on, on, on that topic. But um, it's been very fragmented and lots of siloed uh, studies and, and barriers between different disciplines and between, particularly between academics and non-academics and, and sort of in, in relation to policy and practice. So overall there was a uh, realization that there is this need of trying to bring together different knowledge holders and see also if we could develop a method where we could generate more integrated knowledge about the complexity of urbanization, which is a hugely and immensely complex system, and, and it's changing all the time. It's like a moving target. So that was the original idea about the book, to bring together lots of, of people from uh, academia, that, from different disciplines, to, to start a dialogue together, but also bring in uh, a large group of non-academics that would actually contribute to the picture and to our understanding of this process. So there are more than 120 authors contributing to this book and of the 50 chapters, 35 are written by non-academics so they will represent um, uh, architects, designers, uh, journalists and, and artists and, and from all walks of life really. So I think in, in that sense the book we succeeded in, in getting um, a lot of different perspectives and also I think it was succeeding in outlining uh, a, new, a method for a new type of knowledge generation which is actually bridging all these divides we have between disciplines and between policy and practice and, and theory and, and uh, also between the global south and the global north. So there are a lot of authors here that also represent perspectives from the global south. Deborah, you know you're from South Africa, so maybe you can tell us uh, just a little bit about uh, what, what was your input in this, uh, in this new edition or first edition, actually. Okay, well, thanks for that question. Really, my input was at two levels. So if you look for my name in the book, um, I appear as one of the provocations, and that's one of the spaces that Thomas indicated provided an opportunity for different voices, non-academic voices, to express their views on cities and the important elements they felt contributed to improving well-being in cities. And I also appear in a more formal way in the concluding chapter, and I think that division indicates a deepening of, of the debate in the sense that Thomas has indicated we work in different spaces, we don't often talk to one another. This book provided a platform to open up that conversation. But what I was trying to do in my provocation was to show that we need to move beyond just talking. We need a new breed of urban practitioner who's capable of moving between the worlds. So being both fluent in practice but also still capable of functioning reasonably in the scientific world. So it's not only about putting a scientist and a practitioner and a policymaker into a room and having a discussion. We actually need to start having people who can move fluidly between those worlds. And what I try to do with my provocation is say, well, that's a really nice idea, but you try and do that in practice. It's hugely difficult, and there are values associated with each of those communities which make it very, very difficult to move with fluidity between them. And we need to recognize those challenges. So I think on this panel, for example, you have Seth and myself, who are currently playing sort of ping pong ball between various communities, not only talking with, but deeply investing ourselves in those communities to try and provoke these new conversations. So that's really my contribution to say, yes, it's good to talk to one another, but you actually have no idea how difficult it is to move beyond just talking but actually acting as agents in those different spaces. You need different skill sets, different languages, and that has implications for the way we train people, the way we run conferences, the way we write books, if we're looking for a new breed of person who's capable of, of working between those three universes.
it's interesting because a, a book like this and what Thomas was talking about in terms of the needs for these different communities to come together, but then kind of landing on the pragmatic side that Deborah was talking about. I'd like to make an analogy between the, the different kind of sciences coming together, but also different parts of, I, I suppose, um, the dynamic fluid nature of, of government making decisions, academia, and the private sector. Because everybody's um, rewarded or incentivized to do things slightly differently. Um, and when we try to align those, that's where we kind of run into this friction. And to Dever's point, the importance of having people kind of interlopers who can move between those and not just understand those two communities. So myself, I, I was historically a consultant uh, for 10 years and then uh, the nonprofit space, advocacy space for 10 years. And now I've come into the academic space with some of my colleagues here and learning those processes and, and working that process back and forth. But in order to really be successful, in my opinion, and some of the things that were outlined as, as examples in this book, is how are we incentivizing these different communities to engage with each other differently? So for as one simple example, uh, cities and local government run on political cycles in their, in their four years. And oftentimes they're dealing with sensitive information that cannot be turned over into the public realm in some cases, depending on how that's done. If you try to get the private sector involved, there's issues of confidentiality, there's issues of procurement because it's taxpayer dollars. So it's you have to get into the next level of detail and not just talk about we need this collaboration, but you have to deeply understand those systems, how they're being incentivized, how they're being structured, and work on ways to disrupt that and or to change that to really bring about some, some, some meaningful uh, differences. And I think that's what's exciting about the book, to, to Thomas's point, is getting so many different people from so many different perspectives sharing these examples helps kind of illuminate some of that. <laughs>